Good morning, good morning, good morning, and bless the name of the Lord. Welcome to Kingdom Experience International, South Hill, Virginia campus, our 1115 broadcast. We are excited once again to be yet in the land of the living. It's a bright, sunshiny, springish morning today, and we're coming in blessing the Lord. We're coming in with a fervor for God. We're coming in for a thirst for God. We're coming in with praises on our lips, with dancing on our feet, lifting our hands and acknowledging God. We're coming into the sanctuary with thanksgiving and praise upon our lips. We're coming into the sanctuary with glad news and, and dancing and rejoicing in our God, not in our circumstances, but we're rejoicing in the God who has brought us thus far. It's another glorious Sunday. And we thank you for tuning in with us. We thank you for watching. And we hope that this 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 day, the Lord will bless you with with a nugget of word. We've had a powerful word at our 930 broadcast on sonship uh, from our apostle, the Reverend Dr. Keisha DeCosta Ford at our main campus in Maryland. And this this afternoon at our 1115 broadcast, we're going to continue in what God is doing and how God is moving. And we're going to flow in the spirit of God this morning. First, we're going to have a quick word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, O God, Lord, for this time of hearing your word, O God. We thank you, O God, for, for you manifesting yourself. We thank you, O God, because you have brought us to this point. It is nothing that we have done in ourselves. It's not our own strength. It's not our own abilities who has brought us here, but it's you and you alone, O God. So, God, we say thank you, O God. We come in correct saying thank you, God, acknowledging you as God and God alone, O God, as acknowledging you as Savior, acknowledging you as the one who gives us breath in our bodies and strength in our bodies to move and to come into the house of God, whether that's virtually or if we're in a back in our buildings, oh God, we're still going to bless you and honor you and reverence you and lift you up, oh God, that you might draw all men unto yourself. So Holy Spirit, we invoke you now, oh God, to take this word, oh God, on assignment, oh God, and let it pierce every heart that will hear God, Lord, and do what you want in the lives of the people that will hear this word. We thank you and praise you in advance, oh God. We glorify you in advance of hearing the testimony of how this word has touched the life, oh God. And we thank you and we honor you in Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 We bless God. I, I know it's a, a little bit foreign to folks, but I just I, I, I'm a singer. I'm a worshiper. I'm not just a singer. I'm a worshiper. And 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 uh, I love to bless the Lord. I love to bless the Lord in song. I love to bless the Lord uh, at home in song at work in song. So this morning, we're just going to bless the, wor- the Lord in a, in a word of song. <laughs> Come on and bless the Lord with me. 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 Sing hallelujah. 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 Sometimes you have to bless him all by yourself. Come on and bless the Lord with me. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Sometimes it's just it's just good to to get right on on the right track with a word and in song from the Lord. Sometimes you just have to take a moment, as our apostle uh, Dr. Ford says, and and for station identification. And sometimes you're going to have to learn in these strange times that we find ourselves in this new normal to bless the Lord all by yourself in a strange land, in the strange land of the pandemic. You're going to have to learn to bless the Lord. Yes, it's going to look different. Yes, it's going to feel funny. But trust God that he's moving through the power of your worship today. So learn to begin to bless the Lord in song wherever you find yourself. You never know who's hearing that word of encouragement through song and will be blessed by word through song. If you have your Bibles this morning, go to the book of Exodus in the Old Testament, the second book of the Old Testament. 
Exodus, and we're going to go to chapter 30. Exodus chapter 30, and we're going to read a few verses this morning. Exodus chapter 30, we're going to begin at verse 22, and we're going to read from the message translation this morning. Exodus chapter 30, beginning at verse 22. Amen. And it reads as this. God spoke to Moses, take the best spices, 12 and a half pounds of liquid myrrh, half that much, six and a quarter pounds of fragrant cinnamon, six and a quarter pounds of fragrant cane, 12 and a half pounds of cassia, using the standard sanctuary weight for all of them, and a gallon of olive oil. Make these things into a holy anointing oil, a perfumer's skillful blend. Verse 26, use it to anoint the tent of meeting, the chest of the testimony, the table and all its utensils, the lampstand and its utensils, the altar of incense, the altar of whole burnt offerings and all its utensils, and the wash basin and its base. Dedicate them so they'll be soaked in holiness, so that anyone who so much as touches them will become holy. Verse 30, then anoint Aaron and his sons, consecrate them as priests unto me. Tell the Levites, excuse me, tell the Israelites, this will be my holy anointing oil throughout your generations. Don't pour it on ordinary men. Don't copy this mixture to use for yourselves. It's holy. Keep it holy. Whoever mixes up anything like it or puts it on an ordinary person will be exiled. This morning, we want to talk to you about carrying the cost of carrying the anointing, the cost of carrying the anointing. We hear so much about the anointing, the anointing. We, 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 we casually phrase things as, oh, she sung that song with such an anointing. He preached with such an anointing. But really, what is the anointing? Do we understand really what the anointing really is? Do we understand that the, the concept of how the anointing is supposed to truly work? Okay, what is the anointing? First of all, let's deal with that. Uh, to anoint something means to smear. Okay, as servants of the Most High God, we are to be smeared with the anointing of His presence. We are to have God, in essence, smeared all over us. Okay, to anoint something means to smear. Okay, to, to rub in well. Okay, we are to be rubbed down well with the Spirit of God. In these verses, we see God setting an order for the, the order for the tabernacle and the sanctuary uh, in the previous chapters. And God is very detailed about what he wants his sanctuary to look like in the, in the tabernacle at this point to look like. Uh, he's very detailed in explaining to Moses how everything is to be set up. He is so detailed that he, he gives details down to the fringes of the robes, what the fringes of the robes of the priests are supposed to look like. That is how detailed our God is. And in these verses that we just read, we see God giving a prescription for anointing oil, a holy anointing oil. Okay? And we said that, that, that the anointing means to smear. And so we see Moses uh, taking the instructions from God of how to make the anointing oil, the exact instructions of how to make this anointing oil. Okay? The anointing oil that Moses is instructed to make has interesting ingredients. We need to pay attention to the details of this anointing oil that Moses was commanded to make. First, we're going to deal with the ingredients of this anointing oil. We have to deal with the ingredients because the ingredients tell a story. They're not just written in the Bible because it's what uh, God said, make it up. But the things that the, the ingredients of this anointing oil are, are very, very precious. The first ingredient in this holy anointing oil is myrrh. Many of us are familiar with myrrh from, from Jesus' birth when the wise men brought him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And we, we often wonder why they brought those specific gifts. But myrrh has a medicinal purpose, okay? One of the purposes of myrrh is, is its, its usage for pain. Uh, it, 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 it was so highly prized, it was far valued above gold. 
according to the writings. The interesting thing about myrrh is that the tree from which it is derived must constantly be wounded in order for the fragrant oil to become to come forth. Uh, remember this also that myrrh is one of the principal spices in burial, used in burial. So if you're going to carry the anointing, the, co the first cost that you must pay to carry the anointing of God is, is that you must be prepared to die. You must be prepared to die. You need to die to your ego. You need to die to your earthly attainments. You need to die to your cliques and anything else that is in the way of God doing what he wants in your life to bring him glory. Death is a cost of to carry the anointing. The next ingredient we see on the list is cinnamon. Cinnamon, along with the next two, Cain and Calamus, are sweet spices. And if you carry an anointing, there should be an aroma of sweetness about you. This is because the fragrance of worship should be all over you as you, you walk out the assignment on your life. The, the cinnamon is a very strong scent. Most of us know cinnamon, and it has a very strong and a pungent odor to it. And Cain and Calamus are also sweet spices. They sweeten the atmosphere around them. When you carry the anointing of God, the anointing on your, that rests on your life should sweeten the atmosphere around you. Hallelujah, bless the name of the Lord. There's sweet spices. If there's a, you, you should carry an aroma of the sweetness of God when you carry the anointing on your life. Hallelujah. And then we talk about one of the final ingredients of the uh, anointing oil is, uh, the final ingredient is olive oil. And everybody knows about olive oil. Olive oil's on the shelf in the store. We see it everywhere we go. Everybody knows what olive oil is. Why are we talking about olive oil when it relates to the anointing? But we know about olive oil because we've been talking about its health benefits here in the last few years and, and how, how great it is for the diet. And everybody wants to get the extra virgin olive oil. But do you realize that in order to get that precious EVOO, that those olives must go through an intense pressing? Hallelujah. Stay with me. I'm going somewhere. When, when you carry the anointing of God, expect to undergo pressing. Okay? It's not a light pressing. God is going to take you through many trials and tribulations. Okay? And if you're not going through trials and tribulations, if, you, if your life is not being constantly pressed out, check your anointing. The oil of the anointing is so precious to God and he will take those who carry his anointing through many trials and challenges so that the sweet savor and aroma of the fragrance of Christ exudes from every area of our lives. You can also expect to be stripped like the cane tree, okay? For the thing that, that in your life that will bring God gl glory lies deep within. The cane tree uh, and, and the calamus tree and are, are sweet spices, but their outer layers have to be stripped off in order to get the, to the preciousness that's on the inner layer. And sometimes we've built up so many layers in our life that the anointing can't flow through and God will take us through a, a stripping down. And it's also, and it sounds like it's painful to go through the stri stripping down that God puts us through in our lives, but he's, he's really not trying to hurt you. God is not a God of pain and agony. God is the God who, who loves you enough to strip off the extra stuff in your life. All the weights and all the problems and all the tensions that you built up on your own self. God's got to strip all of that away to get to the precious spices of his anointing on the inside of your life. Endure the stripping. Endure, endure the pressing. God wants to strip away everything that we've made. Every covering that, like Adam and Eve, that where they covered themselves with the fig leaves. Uh, he wants to strip all of that away so he can get to that precious thing on the inside of you. Endure the stripping down of the Holy Ghost. Again, if you aren't undergoing the pressing and the stripping down of God, check your anointing. If you say you carry an anointing, if you say that you are anointed, check yourself if you are not being pressed by God. And if you're not being stripped by God, if you're laid back and as uh, one of my former pastors used to say, if you're living life laid back and lackadaisical, uh, check yourself. Whose anointing are you after? 
As I said, the oil of the anointing is so precious to God. Those trials and those challenges must be met so that the sweet savor and aroma of the fragrance of Christ comes out of every pore of your life. James reminds us that the trying of our faith work is patience. If you're going to carry the anointing of God, expect and rejoice in the pressing. Well, that preacher doesn't sound something like something I want to do. I don't really, I'm not comfortable with being pressed. I'm not comfortable, preacher, with, with, with my life, you know, being on full exposure before God. I'm not uh, uh, comfortable, uh, pastor, with, with my life being stripped away, those things that I'm comfortable with. I don't want those stripped away, but you've got to have them stripped away if you're going to carry the anointing of the living God on your life. Next, let's take a, wait, a look at the weights of the spices. There's a weight to the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God. There's a weight. And God is very specific about these weights. He said that you need a full 500 shekels or, 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 or about 12 pounds. Let me go back and read that again for you so you can have it in the, the plain language. It says 12 and a half pounds of liquid myrrh. Six and a quarter pounds of cinnamon, six and a quarter pounds of fragrant cane, and 12 pounds of cassia, and a gallon of olive oil. Those weights are very specific. Now, if you notice, uh, some of the first two uh, ingredients, there's, there's a lot of that. It, it looks like, you know, uh, the, the cinnamon, the cane, the, the, there's a lot, there's a lot of this. A lot of stripping down, a lot of, of, of tearing away, a lot of the, 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 the sweet fragrance. But look at the olive oil. Six pounds of cinnamon and cane, okay? Six pounds of the aroma of God on your life. <laughs> Twelve pounds of, 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 of cinnamon. And then a gallon, about a gallon of olive oil. A hen is about a gallon of olive oil. Okay? Why so much pressing? Why so much pressing, God? Why, God, why do you press me so much? Why, God, is the agony of your pressing so intense sometimes it seems? On my soul, God, what are you trying to get out of me? And we try to, to get out from the pressing of God, but, but God in his infinite mercy and grace, knows what he's put on the inside of you. Even though we've tried to hide it behind layers of our lives and layers of other things and layers of other people, God is pressing all of that away out of our lives so that our lives will give him glory. Pressing causes formation. It gets the seeds off. It gets the skin off. And it gets you down to the bare uh, ingredient of the oil of the Holy Ghost. Five hundred shekels. It seems like a lot. The sweet savor of God, the sweet savor of worship should be all around you constantly. There should be an atmosphere that, that when, you're, when you're in prayer, when you're communing with God, whichever way that looks for you, okay, that the sweet savor of your, your worship is ever going out from you, that is ever going out from your heart, it's ever going out from your lips, that, that the, the, the sweet smell of the aroma of the, your worship goes up to God as he pours back down the anointing on your life. There's a cost to carry this anointing. This anointing is not an easy thing to carry. It should never be an easy and light thing to carry. Let's take a look at the number of ingredients. Let's take a look at the number of ingredients. There are five listed here in these scriptures. And we know if you study your scriptures and you study extra, extra uh, uh, outside of the word and you study numbers of, of Bibles and you, of, of the Bible and you study details of, of numbers and words and colors, uh, that you will understand that five is the number of grace. Five ingredients. 
And it is, is, is clear that God gave these instructions for this anointing oil. And he included these five interesting ingredients, expensive ingredients. Okay? And five is the number of grace. When you carry the anointing of God, there is... An expectation of the grace of God to be with you to help carry out your assignment. There's grace in that pressing that we don't like to go through. There's grace in the de death of self. There's grace to do the commissioned work of God. Hallelujah for grace. This anointing requires the grace of God because it's God's anointing, it's God's work, it's God's pressing, it's God's stripping away. We need the grace of God on our lives to carry this anointing. We should never try and carry the anointing without the grace of God. We can't carry the anointing of God in our intellect. We can't carry the anointing of God in our education. We can't carry the anointing of God with our cliques and clubs. We cannot carry the anointing of God without God himself. Hallelujah for the grace of God. Next, Mo, uh, God tells Moses what he is to take this precious mixture of anointing oil and put it on. He says, not only are you supposed to anoint the priest, but everything in the house of God are to be considered holy. This is where we typically look to get our idea that everything that is, is meant for service in the house of God, our instruments, our, our computers, everything that we use, all of the, the articles in the house of God are to be anointed for the service of God. That means we set them apart as holy. We consecrate them for the sole use of God alone. So it is with our lives. And we, we as God uh, begins to put the anointing oil on our lives and he begins to consecrate our lives, we are now set apart from the world. We're set apart from the things of the world we're set apart by the anointing of God from the thinking of the world and our thoughts because of the anointing that resides on us and within us that, 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 that we are thinking different because the anointing changes us we said it means to be smeared that means we're greasy with God if you want to get ghetto with me we're greasy with the grace of God hallelujah you know, when we anoint our, our chairs and we anoint everything in the house of God and we consider those things to be holy because the oil of the anointing is so precious. There is a commandment from God to Moses in this passage of scriptures that we read this morning that this oil is not to be poured out on anybody. On just anybody it can't be used on the common man but he, he specifically calls up Aaron's and his sons to be anointed with this oil those who would be priests and if you followed our series from our main campus last month we talked about kings and priests and those who would be priests in the household of faith must have an anointing from God there should be evidence of the anointing upon them if the anointing should not be poured out on any and everybody just because somebody can hoop good and turn a phrase doesn't mean that they, 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 they de deserve the anointing of God you can't pour this anointing on everybody the anointing is not to be shared with just everybody just because they look good according to James just because they look good and wear fine clothes don't sit them on the front row and call them anointed okay y'all didn't like that I'm deep this morning okay but there should be evidence of the sweet savor of God upon their lives. Your anointing is holy. God tells Moses that this anointing oil is holy. It is to be kept holy. That means we have to fight to preserve this anointing on our lives. When you carry the anointing, you're going into spiritual warfare to protect the precious anointing on your lives. You don't pour it out uh, 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 amongst the common man. You don't share it amongst common folks. You don't share it from uh, uh, with folks that are outside of the household of faith. It's meant to be used and 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 and, and, and glorify God. And you take it and you use it for the service of the living God God commands Moses that this holy anointing oil is to be kept precious and to be kept holy and we should regard our anointing on our lives as holy not something frivolous not something careless not something that our education brought us or our titles brought us no 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 nothing you did brought this anointing on your life nothing you can buy can put this anointing on your life your cliques and your clubs will not get you this anointing you must have it directly from God 
The anointing is not to be poured out on any and everybody. You should never neglect the anointing and you must constantly refill the anointing by staying in God's presence and on your face before him. However that looks like to you. When we start talking about staying in God's presence, folks get nervous. And when we start talking about staying on your face before God, people imagine that we're laid out on the floor somewhere for, for days and weeks at a time. Sometimes it requires that. But most of the time when you're staying on your face before God, that means there's a humility on your life because you recognize that this anointing is not your own. That you did not do this. That there's nothing you could have done that could have put, placed this weight of the anointing on your life. There's nothing... No good thing, as the Bible says, it's good in you that caused this anointing of the living God to be upon your life. There's nothing of, upon you that you could have did to attain this anointing. That's the humility uh, of the preciousness of this anointing. When you stay on your face before God, you're, you're constantly bowing low and, and recognizing and acknowledging, God, I need you to do this thing. Without you, God, this work on my life, the assignment on my life will not get done. This is the anointing that's so precious that God commands that we keep holy. It means sometimes that like John the Baptist, you are called to isolation and hard diets. I know we're in the pandemic. We've been isolated almost uh, actually uh, a year today. Here in Virginia, it's been a year. We've been isolated and separated and, you know, you know, locked in and locked down. But sometimes, like John the Baptist, isolation is required to maintain this anointing. Sometimes it means that you will eat an odd diet. Not necessarily locusts and wild honey, but sometimes you're going to have to eat this scroll of the word of God in front of everybody watching you. And look like an absolute fool to carry this anointing on your life. It costs to carry this anointing, people. It's not something light. Don't try and substitute different ingredients for your anointing. We talked about the pain of, of the stripping away and the pain of the pressing. And sometimes we, we want to trade out that expensive and precious calamus and cane and cinnamon uh, for, for, for generic ingredients. No, 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 brothers and sisters. Do not try and trade a generic for the things of God. Generic ingredients will cost you your anointing. When you try to mix as, as the Bible says, don't try to mix this in any other formula. Because the formula that God has set is precise for your life. Don't try and substitute easier ingredients for your anointing. Go through the pressing. Go through the stripping of your life. Allow the sweet savor of the Holy Ghost to emanate from you. There's going to be some pain. There's going to be death. You're going to have to die to carry this anointing. Dead men carry an anointing. You'll catch that later. You know, oftentimes we want to act like the bargain basement ingredients or the generic option will do in the house of God. But God is calling for this anointing. He's, he's got precise ingredients. He's got precise weights. And sometimes when we're trying to mix up our own oils and our own fragrances, we use the wrong weights and we get overburdened and we use the wrong sizes and we use the wrong ingredients and the sweet smell is no longer upon our lives and we try to fake it until we make it and, and make it look like what God has instituted but it's not working people aren't getting saved people aren't getting delivered because you're walking in your own anointing that you concocted let God concoct his holy anointing on your life his weights are precise. He knows exactly how much you can take of the stripping and the pressing. It's not going to be overbearing. Remember, we talked that he said he gives you grace to carry it. He gives you grace to walk through it. He gives you grace to endure the pressing so that your life will eventually bring him glory. Hallelujah. Remember, God himself specifies the ingredients and the amount of the ingredients for this anointing. The anointing on your life cannot be copied. God specifies, don't try to make, make some other alternative uh, anointing oil. Many will try and fake an anointing. You've seen it. Oftentimes it looks like long after the Holy Ghost has, 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 has preached the sermon and sat down, you still rambling on, you walking in your own anointing. 
Bless the Lord. You cannot copy the anointing, a true anointing from the living God. It cannot be copied. It cannot be remanufactured. And it cannot be cheapened. Many will try. But the power of the living God will not be in their efforts. To the church of the living God who carries an anointing of the Holy Ghost, I'm asking you this morning, how are you handling your anointing? How are you handling your anointing this morning? Are you trying to cheapen it by, by mixing in generic ingredients and generic options uh, to, to try and lessen the, the load of the pressing? How are you handling God's anointing this morning? Is this anointing precious to you? Is the anointing on your life worth you enduring what God says you must endure to hold and care, to be a vessel of this anointing? How are you handling your anointing this morning? How are you handling God's anointing on your life? Are you cheapening it and allowing it to become something that God never intended for it to be? Are you selling it on the marketplace so that your name can be in lights? How are you handling God's anointing this morning? This anointing is holy. Everybody can't touch it. Everybody can't handle it. How are you handling God's anointing this morning? I'm talking to church folks right now. I'm going to get to the rest of y'all in a minute. How are you handling God's anointing? Yes, I asked you once again, how are you handling God's anointing? Because I want you to consider the consequences for irreverently handling the anointing of God on your life. When you irreverently handle the anointing of God, people die. Not only do you die, but you cause death all along the pathway that you walk when you're mishandling God's anointing. People die, people die, people die, people die, and their deaths are on your head. That's scripture. I didn't say that. Read the book. When you mishandle God's anointing and you cheapen it and, 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 and try to, to gain money and gain attainment from God's anointing, terrible things happen. Souls aren't saved. Lives aren't changed. Marriages aren't restored. The sick are not healed. The deaf do not hear. The lame will not walk. The blind will not have their eyes open because you're walking in somebody else's concoction, not the anointing of the living God. How are you handling your anointing, pastors? How are you handling your anointing, singers, in the house of the Lord? How are you handling God's anointing, prophets? How are you handling God's anointing? Those of you who sit in the pew, how are you handling the anointing? Do you even realize that you have an anointing on your life? If you're a believer in the house of the Lord, there's an anointing for you to walk in, to carry, to be stripped down from, to be pressed so that your very life that you've given to Christ will bring him glory. How are you handling your anointing? There is a cost to be paid for carrying an anointing and we will all pay it. Some of us will pay it well and some of us will pay it poorly by mishandling God's anointing. And if you've been mishandling God's anointing, it's time to repent. I know folks don't talk about repentance anymore, but I'm here as a preacher of the living God this morning to tell you that if you're mishandling God's anointing, it's time to repent from mishandling God's anointing. His anointing is absolutely holy. Stop mishandling it. Repent from mishandling. Acknowledge that you've been mishandling it and repent. As we talk, there's grace. There's grace. If you repent and turn and allow God to use the anointing on your life for his glory. Now, for those of you who have never accepted Jesus Christ, there's no anointing on your life at all. Not from God. You may be anointed with other things and other people, but it's not an anointing from God. This holy anointing can only be found as you surrender your life to Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. 
But what does it take to get this anointing? You can't buy it with money. It takes sacrifice. It takes a cost. We talked about the cost of the carrying an anointing. But if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, this anointing will not be yours. You must first recognize that Jesus Christ came into the earth to redeem mankind, that he gave up his life on Calvary's cross, suffered, bled, died, and rose again on the third day for you so that you could have access, so that your life could also bring him glory. What does that take? It takes a simple confession according to scripture that if you will confess the Lord Jesus with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. That's scripture. Simple open confession of Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord and believing in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Salvation then is yours. And then once you've entered the door of salvation and walk through the door of salvation, you can begin to explore what an anointing on your life and what a difference your life will have when you've surrendered it to Christ. Tomorrow is not promised. Your next nanosecond is not promised. Would you give your life to Christ today? Would you be a part of the kingdom of God? Would you have your life radically changed by the power of God and walk in, 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 in the newness of life that only God can give you? Will you give up the false trappings of life and be stripped away in your soul of all of the pain and all the, the agony and the sin and the blackness of sin in your soul and say yes to Jesus Christ today? Again, all it takes is a confession of Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord and that you believe that God has raised him from the dead and scripture says that you shall be saved. If that's you today, we invite you to let us know. You can hit us up on Facebook Messenger right here in our Messenger on Facebook or you can email us at commit at keichurch.org and simply say, I gave my life to Jesus today. And we'll get back with you. We'll have a conversation with you. We'll get you on a pathway to discipleship in Jesus Christ. No gimmicks, no games. We just want to partner with you as you explore your faith. If you're looking for a church home, if you've been in the pandemic and you've been, you know, out of church or looking for a church home, consider Kingdom Experience International. We are a fairly young church at three years old, but we preach the word of God here. Whether that's on a Sunday morning broadcast or throughout the week, the word of God will be taught. We're a five-fold ministry church, which means we operate according to Ephesians 4 and 11. And you can experience the power of the living God, the spirit of the living God. If you're looking for a church home, please, again, hit us up on Facebook. Let us know. I'm looking for a church home and I'm interested in Kingdom Experience International. We would love to partner with you on your faith journey. If you have questions about baptism or the baptism of the Holy Ghost or any faith question, we're open for your questions. We're not afraid of your tough questions. We're here to answer your questions. We're here to pray with you. If you need prayer, you can hit us up on Facebook Messenger or you can go to our website at keichurch.org, keichurch.org, and simply fill out a connection card and say, I would like prayer or I would like membership or I have a question about baptism. Whatever your need is, contact us. We're looking forward to hearing from you. If you're uh, throughout the week and you're tuned into Facebook, we have many activities going on on Facebook Live during the week. Uh, Monday through Thursday, we have a uh, Bible study and we have our Facebook Live experiences right here on our Facebook page. We ask that you would join us with, uh, during the week and join us on one of our experience nights. And you can hear a quick 10 minute word that will encourage your soul and strengthen you to carry you through the rest of the week. On Monday night, our apostle, Reverend Dr. Keisha DeCosta Ford, has discovering biblical doctor, tr excuse me, experiencing, excuse me, discovering biblical truths with Dr. Keisha Ford on her personal Facebook page. So if you're looking for a Bible instruction that way, you can go on her personal Facebook page and hear her talk and teach the word of God on Monday nights at 815. All of the other experiences Tuesday through Thursday night are at 6 p.m. right here on the Kingdom Experience International Facebook page. Also, if you would like to make an offering in any form, please again visit our website at keichurch.org forward slash give and you will be able to make your offering 
uh, that way all the information for our giving page is there again we thank you for watching our broadcast we thank you we hope this word of the Lord has blessed you today we hope that that there has been a nugget of truth that has sunk down deep in your soul and has touched your consciousness and turned your heart to God today we thank you for watching you watching with us and we bless you with the name of the Lord in Jesus name amen God bless